and welcome to the short stuff. Josh here, Chuck here, giddy up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to tell you uh, in part about a remarkable young teenager in Tanzania in the 1960s. And his name was Erasto Mpimba. Is it Mpimba? <laughs> it's Mpimba. Okay. The reason why we're talking about Erasto and Pemba today is because he was a pretty remarkable kid. He stumbled upon, I guess you could say rediscovered, mm -hmm. a concept that just baffles physicists today because it doesn't make any sense. It may violate the second law of thermodynamics. And um, it ended up being named after him because he was a persistent little cuss who made this observation and, and just kept going until he finally got the ear of somebody who could help him try to figure it out. You know, the first law of thermodynamics is you don't talk about thermodynamics. <laughs> Very nice. I was thinking about that movie the other day. I was like, I used to be so into that. And now Same. it's so juvenile. I know. I almost put it on the other day as a, as a laundry folding uh, movie, which I like mm -hmm. to do uh, mm -hmm. just to see parts of. And I had the same thought. I was like, I don't know if I just even want to go down that road again. Yeah, because it exists happily in, in the past. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I heard at the premiere, um, Brad Pitt leaned over to Edward Norton and said, I'll never be in a movie this cool again. Right. <laughs> and he was right. I think he was. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about Erasto and Pemba because he discovered um, the what's called the Impemba effect after him. And I think I said earlier that he rediscovered it. Um, it was first noticed by Aristotle, mm -hmm. or at least it was first written about all the way back to Aristotle. Um, medieval scientist Roger Bacon mentioned it as well. So did um, the Enlightenment philosopher Rene Descartes. And what they all noticed and what Erasto and Pemba got his um, name attached to is that hot liquids placed in a freezer can freeze faster than cool liquids placed in the same freezer at the same time. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, he discovered this as a 13-year-old. Uh, he was in, in class in Tanzania, and they were making, in school, and they were making ice cream as a class. Uh, I don't know if that was for fun or if it was part of science. I like to think it was part of science, but uh, regardless, he, um, you know, they <laughs> added sugar to the boiling fresh milk. You let it cool. You put it in a container. You put it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. They were doing this again another day. I bet they just like it ice cream now that I think about it. Sure. Uh, he was like, hey, the freezer space is getting low and I want to make my special ice cream. So he's like, I'm not going to let this stuff cool down. I'm just going to go grab that spot while it's available. Mm -hmm. And an hour and a half later, he was like, hey, everybody, uh, my ice cream is ready before yours. In your face. Yeah. And he said, but that doesn't make any sense because I put that hot milk in. So why would mine have frozen at all? And he went to his teacher mm -hmm. uh, and his teacher said, I got too much to deal with. So you <laughs> run along, Erasto. Yeah. I'm not curious like you. No. And Erasto was undeterred over the years, teacher after teacher, as he made his way through middle school and then high school. Um, he would talk to them about this discovery and he was dismissed by all of them. And then finally, one day at his high school, a physicist uh, who was a visiting physicist to the University of Dar es Salaam, he was a British guy named Dennis Osborne, uh, he came to give a lecture, and uh, Erasto and Pemba saw his chance and said, um, Professor Osborne, I've got something that may knock your socks off. Check this out. Do you think in the teacher's lounge over the years, everyone was like, hey, has, has uh, and Pemba hit you up about this ice cream business? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're all drinking wine and rolling so their annoying. eyes. So annoying. So annoying, all the box. scientific curiosity out of this kid. <laughs> I know. Luckily, Dennis Osborne was like, ooh, I like that. Let's yeah. talk a, a little more about it. He likes this kid, and they uh, he invited him in to, to, you know, to perform experiments to see if it worked. Mm -hmm. And then by 1969, I guess Mpimba is uh, 19 years old by this point, they had written a paper on this phenomenon, and... He was like, hey, buddy, we got a name after you. Yeah, which I'm sure he was like, heck yeah. Well, let's take a break and we'll talk a little more about the Impemba effect itself. How about that? All right. Okay, Chuck, so w the reason that the Impemba effect is so strange is because according to the laws of thermodynamics, um, 
molecules that are moving much faster um, than other molecules in, say, like a hot liquid and a cold liquid, mm -hmm. they take longer to slow down. And part of the very process of slowing down, temperature, by the way, is a measurement of the excitement or movement of molecules Ooh. in a substance, right? Mm -hmm. Part of the process of slowing down is that it takes time. So it makes no sense intuitively, but also according to the laws of physics, that a hot liquid with faster moving molecules could get to the point of freezing faster than a cooler liquid with slower moving molecules because they're both trying to get to the point where they stop moving and are solid blocks of ice. Yeah, it would just make intuitive sense that something colder and closer to that temperature would do it faster. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also observe this if you go out and let's say you live in Minneapolis and it's January and you go outside with a cup of warm water and throw it into the air, that will that will go into an icy mist instantaneously if it's cold enough. Uh, if you do that same thing with a glass of cold water, that won't happen. No. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you pulling my leg? No, I mean, that's, I saw a video of it, and that's what they say is another example. That's really great. I, I don't have firsthand experience because it doesn't get that cold here. Very cool, though. Uh, no, instead, you can fry an egg on a sidewalk. Am I right? Yeah, right. So I guess essentially a good analogy that I came up with, that's why I think it's good, is that Erasso <laughs> and Pemba basically found that there's a foot race between um, like hot water and cold water and that, uh, well, I screwed up my analogy already, Chuck. Do you want to take it? Uh, I believe that uh, there's a foot race, but one racer has started sooner, yet the one behind gets there quicker, mm -hmm. even though they should supposedly be running at the same rate of speed. This happens at Braves games. <laughs> uh, oh, and you know what? It's what? Mr. Freeze who they're racing. Isn't that funny? Oh, wow. So they're clearly fans of the Impemba effect. There's a track, uh, clearly a track guy uh, dressed up as Mr. Freeze, mm -hmm. and they let a, a person from the stands, they bring him down in the outfield, and they, they give them a, a pretty long, like a quarter of the distance head start. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Freeze starts, and you almost always lose. But a, uh, a young woman the other day beat Mr. Freeze, and it was... It's on YouTube. It's very cool to watch because mm -hmm. you could tell that she knew what she was doing. Nice. Uh, because she was not running that hard until Mr. Freeze went. She was running at a decent clip, and then as soon as they hit the timer for Mr. Freeze to start, she kicked it into the next gear. Wow. And whipped him. It was great. That's awesome. I remember they used to have giant hammers and rulers and stuff sponsored oh, they still by do. Home Depot Racing. Yeah, they yeah. have multiple races at Home uh, um, Braves games now? Yeah, they got Mr. Freeze, and they have the, the Home Depot hammer drill. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what the third one was. So silly. <laughs> I got to go this year, man. Yeah, I've been to a few games. Well, let's go. They stink. Wha oh, really? Oh, yeah, the Braves are terrible this year. It's a uh, very big disappointment. But, you know, what are you going to oh, do? Poor Braves. Um, so, yeah, that was a great analogy, Chuck. Way to go. Thanks. So it turns out that answering the, this weird problem has been trickier than you'd think, trickier than physicists thought, yeah. because some physicists conducting experiments on the Impemba effect have shown, yep, this is definitely a thing. Other experimenters have not turned up any results, and they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And so the fact that it happens under some cases and not others is not only even weirder, it also suggests to to dissenters, people are like, there's no such thing as the Impemba effect, yeah. that there's some variable that some experimenters aren't taking into effect. It could be different mineral contents in the water. Mm -hmm. It could be convection cells in the warmer water are causing it to freeze faster. It could be that our freezers work harder on warmer air than cooler air, so it'll freeze faster in a freezer. They don't know, but they're like, there's no such thing as the Impemba effect. It's really just some... Uh, mistaken variable in in the experiments. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and there's also a long argument about this, about what freezing first actually means. Like you have to, if you're going to do something like this, you got to agree what that, when you're technically freezing and, mm -hmm. and who got there first. Um, it's not like Mr. Freeze running across that finish line and hitting his chest to that tape. No. That's obvious. So yes. you got to agree on freeze first. Uh, is that like, hey, is it the first one to reach 32 degrees 
Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. Uh, if it starts to form ice, ice crystals, if it's good enough to put in a cocktail mm-hmm. without getting too watered down. Uh, and I'm going to let you take MIT's engineering school response because it was very, uh, actually, guys, and not yeah. at all helpful. It totally was. There was a blog post by them that basically said um, all liquids freeze at the same rate once they reach the freezing temperature. So <sighs> no liquid can technically freeze faster <laughs> than another. And you got the impression they really thought that they had solved the Impemba effect. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about, MIT. No, the rest no one is talking about that. No, the rest of the world is like, nope. We're talking about if you put a warm cup of water and a cool cup of water in a freezer at the same time, not once. What happens once they reach freezing? (sighs) So, if you even if you say, okay, we're going to talk about like we're going to use as the milestone or the finish line, which of these things gets to thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius first, the freezing point. Yeah. Um, there's still a big discrepancy in how you track this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and different experimenters have been using essentially what you call like different stopwatches, even though mm-hmm. they're not actually standing there with a the stopwatch. And it wasn't until some researchers from Kyoto in 2025 basically figured out a, a measurement standard that any lab could use to test the Impemba effect. So now all of these experiments are going to be comparing apples to apples for results. And hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is the part that I think is the coolest, is that some researchers out there uh, are like, hey, I guess in principle, I agree that we're not n- noticing some variable, but we feel like we've accounted for all the variables. And perhaps there might be some unknown variable that we haven't discovered yet. Yeah, like some force or effect in nature that's just undiscovered that we're seeing it. in the Impemba effect. Yeah, I love Pretty that cool. too. So you might say like, okay, aside from just science being curious and wanting to know the answers to everything, like what's the point in studying the Impemba effect? And I was very surprised to find that there's a lot of reasons to understand this, that just knowing how fluid dynamics uh, or systems under fluid dynamics um, relax or cool, Mm -hmm. um, it it would actually open up or overcome a huge hurdle that um, quantum computing is facing right now. They have to figure out how to get qubits, which are the quantum computing version of ones and zeros in traditional computers, back to their ground state as fast as possible. So if you can figure out how something like molecules stop moving faster than cool molecules, hot molecules, um, you might be able to apply that to quantum computing, and that would be a huge leap forward for it. Totally. Uh, Yeah, because cooling those things down takes a lot of energy. And I want to do an episode about uh, the, the AI's... Uh, environmental cost at some point soon. Okay, sure. Uh, You could also develop new sensors, new materials, and at the base, you could also um, make better freezers and refrigerators too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, As for Mpemba himself, uh, he overcame a lot of obstacles to eventually uh, have a nice long career as a game warden Mm -hmm. and uh, very sadly just passed away a couple of years ago in 2023. Yeah. But he so, was older, right? Uh, 20, yeah, 73, that's not yeah, bad, I guess. not a bad life. But uh, our, our scientific curiosity hat is off to you, sir. Yes, and that means short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 